Okay, this is the second part two, the second part of our cointegration and analysis step by step guide. So in the previous one, the part one, I said that uh, we will do a unit root test on res residuals, and as you can see, we calculated the the corrected based on McKinnon values, the corrected t values, and it was minus three point seven seven eight. And as as here explained, in five percent and ten percent, there are the the t values are very marginal. So it means that we don't know should I accept or <laughs> reject the null hypothesis, which is having the unit roots in the residuals. So it's it's we don't know. We are not sure. We should do further analysis. So we are we we ex we are suspicious of having co-integration relationship in our model okay now the next step is that uh, as she explains the my professor explains the long run income elasticity is estimated to be 0.61 which is this number let me zoom for you As you can see, then the long run elasticity of the income is 0.61, right? So it says the long run income elasticity is estimated to be 0.61. However, the long run effect of the short rate is minus 0.02. How? Because of the coefficient of short term rate, as you can see here. So it says, however, the 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 short the long run effect of the short interest rate is 0 point o man minus 0 0.02 that is one percentage point increase in the short rate one anti one unit increase as interest rate measure in percentage will decrease the demand for money about money by about two percent that's just interpret interpretation of the the coefficients However, this this is also the graph for the residuals. Okay, which there might, and they they explain that there are some structural breaks that are causing the problem of having unit roots. You see, since dynamics is missing from the equation, there will be some persistent as shown by the residual plots. Here, by dynamics, means that the sh the the short the short term effects of the of the variables because because the angle grandeur or the OLS regression that we have here, this one, this one, is only showing the long term relationship. Why? Because all of all your variables are are are. Uh, are are levels they are not differenced now we will we will see in, in future that how what is the level variables not to make you more confused let's go back to this okay now there might be some uh, structural breaks which uh, causing this problem with the unit roots since dynamics is missing from the good equation there will be some persistent as shown by the residual plots you see the long run equation using the long rates looks very similar to be one using the short rate we will therefore concrete concentrate on the short rate equation for further analysis okay so now we we are suspicious of having a uh, having a cointegration and a relationship that's why we need to do the Johansson test so what what's the what's the advantage of Johansson test is that in case you have several cointegration relationship more than one they will gonna show you actually the mm, the picture is that basically when you have some dynamics in the model it means that uh, the these these variables are interacting together in the long run and 
you don't know maybe sometimes sometimes the dependent variable is is uh, is is dependent variable but in VAR model we will take every every variable as exogenous separately and we we, we build the um, the model okay now about yuan's and test i will explain to you actually yuan's and test it's, it's, uh, i found it very complicated and uh, i will try to explain to you only um some introductionary but i advise you to read it yourself it's it's quite complicated okay um uh, okay in our eviews model we close this and close that okay how do you build the yuan's and test first of all i did it here before but i will do it again so that you don't panic uh, first of all you go to estimate var okay and you go for unrestricted var in the unrestricted VRR, you 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 take all the variables as an endogenous variable. Okay, so it means my m is endogenous, my y is endogenous, and my sr is endogenous. About the lag interval, it's it's quite complicated. What should be these numbers? It's uh, as far as I understood, and I searched so many things. Please correct me if anybody have better idea. As far as I understood, it's just a matter of doing by learning like a like a uh, test and error. That's it. So uh, here also explain how you choose the 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 lag length. You see here. It says that choosing in terms of uh, AIC and SIC gives you two different lag length choices. Note that with four, with four lags, the trace statistic indicate no cointegration relationship. So we select two. So it's sort of try and error to see which one is 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 okay. And it's also explained that this is not entirely correct. Just show how difficult the whole thing is. Always use some economic theory and your judgment to arrive at the model as there is no correct way. Thank you. This is the problem of all econometrics, uh, econometricians. Thank you so much, Miss Boero. Okay, so we we do as a lang uh, lag length of two and we construct this. Okay, this is vector autoregression estimate. We don't we don't uh, care about this uh, he at this stage, and we go for cointegration test here. View cointegration test, which is this Yuan's and test. Okay. I do not touch anything here because I don't want to, and I don't know really. I honestly I don't know. Please help me if you can. Better idea, for example, how you choose this lag interval. I have no idea. Okay, now. What does this show to us? It says that trace test indicates one cointegration equation at the 0.05 level. Okay, it means that with the probabilities, we this is what I learned from my professor that you will go until you 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 cannot reject the null so the first one is correct v here we stop so we go at most one and also it says trace test indicates one cointegration level there is another test also unrestricted cointegration rag test it also says based on eigenvalues which is maximum eigenvalues test indicate one cointegration equation which one of these tests is correct? My professor did said that this one, the first one, trace test is more powerful. Why? What's the what is it about? I don't know. You should go and read yourself. It's complicated, okay? Alright. 
So we, we have a one cointegration equation, this is for sure. And just for teasing myself, if I put here 4, let's see what happens. Trace test indicates no cointegration. You see how it is? It's just a try and error to see what's going on for the lags. Okay. So this, I, I have already saved this test as a Johansson test, which is the same. Okay. And, uh, yes, this is the one cointegration equation. Okay, this is, uh, this is some explanatory about cointegration analysis. Now we go to the next step, which is estimating uh, estimating the just a minute uh, yeah estimating the the, the cointegration coefficients based on yuan's and test now uh, okay as you can see this is a very Large, the Johansson test is very quite large table, right? Okay. Let me. If you come down. You have unrestricted cointegrating coefficients. Okay, so we w now uh, and and as you can see, normalized cointegration coefficients and, and so on and so on. Anyhow, the important thing is that uh, since there is only one cointegration vector that has been identified based on Yuan's and test, we don't have to worry about imposing restrictions to identify uh, cointegrating vectors. Because if there is more than, if this trace test, let me show you, if this was more than, showing more than two cointegration vectors, we have we have this problem to 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 impose restrictions here to see which one is cointegrating vectors okay now here we have only one so there is no no problem we are not uh, we are not bothered with imposing uh, restrictions so uh, Normalized cointegrated coefficients, which is here, it means that your m coefficient is one is normalized. This is your co this is the coefficient of your of your y or income, right? Yes. My uh, plus the coefficient is is the short interest rate, which is this one plus residual. Right. So this is this is actually your cointegration uh, uh, coefficients. Uh, however, let's not forget that what we are doing to do in the part one, we we we, we applied OLS or Engel Granger approach, which is which is. Let me show you this. See if you if you look at this equation, this is a long run equation because there is no difference difference terms of variables. It's only level terms, and these coefficients are somehow will will compare with the Johansson test coefficients and another approach coefficients, which I'm going to explain to you. And then we will put these three models together, and we will see if all these coefficients are matching or no. So you see how it is complicated. But don't worry. So just remember, this is one of our findings, this model, which we call it Engel-Granger. 
The other coefficients is here, which we call it Johansen coefficients, which is other approach of coefficients. Okay. Here. Sorry. These coefficients normalized. Okay, as you can see. So, uh, now here it explains to us that in this stage we will compare somehow these coefficients with all Enger Granger or OLS regression to see how far we are or how close we are together. So I'm gonna I'm gonna compare these coefficients with these coefficients look so uh, the coefficient of your y here in the in the Johansen test is minus 0.58 uh, but th let me explain to you that the, 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 the sign of this coefficient will change because this will go to the other sign, uh, other, other, other um, part of the equal sign. So this is actually 0.58, not minus 5.8. So the y co coefficient is 0.58 and here is 0.48, which is quite similar, you see? And here is minus 0.03 and here is minus 0.02. And again, it's quite similar. So this is a good news for us. We are, we are narrowing down the, the p and and coming to some ranges of the coefficients. You see what I mean? We are getting a range of coefficients to be sure that our model is stationary and makes sense. Okay. So it says the estimated long run latency are quite similar, which is good, and this is a good news. Okay. So um, as 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 I explained to you here, look, same as this model uh, explained. This is the Johansen coefficients, as I show you, and this is the Engel-Granger coefficients, and it says the estimated long-run elasticities are quite similar. Which is a good news, but I mean, <laughs> in I think it's a good news. Okay, and the next step is to perform. Uh, yes, vector error correction estimates. We are doing this with V V V A R. Okay. So, we want to construct the VCM model. I don't. I only have two minutes, which I don't know. Should I continue or should I go to? Let me see. Okay, I'm going to stop here and uh, explain to you the, the vector error correction estimate in the another video.